Hey everyone, welcome back. Now today we're going to be doing a little bit of a comparison video between some kits. And the kits that are going to be shown in general are, are going to be some Camaro kits. So, yeah, a couple days ago I was at one of my hobby shops. But they found out they have the AMT 2010 Camaro SSRS in stock. With the Hot Wheels livery, so decided to get, I was waiting for a while, decided to finally get the kit. And then, one thing I also had for a while that I also featured in previous videos was this limited edition Revel 2010 Camaro SS 2-in-1 kit. So, one thing I have found was that with the AMT kit, found out that it's a curbside kit. So there's no engine details. So it's a very plain and basic kit. As you can sort of guess by the pack the back on the packaging. So very basic, but does have the Hot Wheels stuff. So my main plan with these is that I'm gonna take the decals from this kit, build up the Camaro, this Camaro, make it more fancier. Have have the one that has more detail do this in the Hot Wheels livery. Then build this as a custom Camaro using the special body parts that the kit comes with. So, so these are the two kits. Now, first we'll go through the Revell kit since this one's already been opened. Now, I haven't done any, haven't done much building on this. So... Pretty much a little bit of an insight on what this kit comes with. So we have the full interior with front and rear seats, buildable interior. And then what's left of what I'm guessing a front front cowl part. And we got the brakes and my guess is the wheel pin or some retaining pins. So so some of these parts have already been trimmed off. So you have here the intake, some radiator hoses. Have the then we have the front grill, firewall, radiator, the exhaust manifold, or not the exhaust, yeah, just the exhaust itself, cooling fans, drive shaft, and differential, and then then a coolant reservoir by the looks of it. Then more poly panels like the hood, side skirts, and this is what I mean how this kit has custom parts. Now it's got the side skirts and a rear front and rear diffuser that will that will simply just glue on. Then this kit here, I did end up getting this one used, so all the stuff here ha was already built pre-built, but I'm sure a lot of this will just pop off. Then might be a little bit hard to tell, but there is the kit probably has sat outside for a while since there is some yellowing on the plastic, but I'm not thinking that's going to be too much of a problem. So let me just get this apart. Okay, so here's the body. As you can see, it's got the front, the front all molded together, which even like this. Just put some mesh in front. That would make a great custom right there. Then you got the fog lights, the under grill. Then here we have the basic bumper. So then that's where the diffu front diffuser would just simply glue on on top. Give give it a more aggressive look. So pretty much that. And then got the interior tub, which is fairly nicely done course then here we have the chassis which let's see okay apparently yeah okay yeah the rear wasn't glued in so that's good so the entire rear subframe has been put together now the front has already been fully put together so probably won't have much to do on that besides paint it up then we got the low profile tires and of course with these Mostly Revell kits. They don't have any registration on them. 
then got front got the rear axle and the wheel pins as well as some metal bits for the exhaust so that's pretty cool and one thing that I did find out on this is that the engine the previous owner of the kit did pre already pre-build the engine but luckily it's it looks looks rather good and isn't a complete glue bomb might need some touch up on the the engine cover then detail up the exhausts then put the intake on but I think it looks pretty good probably have to glue the exhaust back on so there's that then we have the then we have the standard rear rear diffuser for the dual exhausts mirrors spoilers and the door handles which are really nice to have them separate means that you can do more detail work then you got the mirrors very nice then reaching reaching the end got the tr the chrome tree here which one of the tires have already fallen out of so there's two sets of wheels you got the stand we got a uh, the standard five spoke Camaro wheels and then we got the five spoke double laced which I think look really good so yeah we have the front headlights then the uh, then the fog lights underneath as well as the bezels for the exhausts rear view tail lights and and the mirror and then the mirror how the mirror itself for the mirror housings so then we got some red clear pieces for the tail lights which look really nicely done but and then then here we have and we have the basic instructions gives you the full full out and then the call out of all the parts that we'll ever need for the vehicle. So then let's see. Yeah, and then back here's where you'll end up having the optional parts. So like here you have you'd use the bezels for the stock exhaust or the exhaust pipes or the exhaust tips for the custom diffuser. And then side skirts. You do get only the one choice of hood, which it's a little bit unfortunate, but kind of expected. Then call out for the decals and such. Then, then pretty much on the back, decal placements. And here we have the decals themselves, which are really dusty. And I'm not entirely sure if these are still going to work. So I'm probably going to do a test sample on these. And figure out which one will be nice to use so it, so pretty much a case of see where these ones go but I'm hoping these will still be useful I'll put those back in there so with the so there was a look at the Ravel kit now I'm going to clean up all clean up my mess here and then I'm going to open up the AMT kit and take a look at that so stay tuned so I got the shrink wrap off the car now going into it first thing first thing in here is that you get a choice of two windows clear windows with molded in windshield wipers and then separate rear glass along with corner glass and on the other side we have we have some smoked windows, which look quite nicely on. That'll look quite nicely depending on which one I'm going to build. And then here we have the special edition orange copper chrome rims that look really nice. I'm going to just keep these in the package to prevent them from getting all smudged up. But I like think these look really nice on the. These will look really nice on the car. 
And then, moving on, we got here the body. Then, where did my cutter go? Well, anywho. So, we got the body all set. We got the body here, molded in blue. There's a little bit of some scuffing, but supposed to have some, a little bit of some metallic shine to it. But if anything, I'm just going to paint this up, like you do with your typical kits. Then the undercarriage is already done up in a, done up in a semi-gloss black. So those probably go be painted up separate. This might get painted up a different color, but case of just painting up the undercarriage so nothing too extravagant going on there then on the body you can see how there's some there's some locating tabs for where I assume where some parts would end up going then we have here some more of the interior pieces whereas I can already t I can already tell on the Ravel kit that the interior mostly builds onto the base instead of separately. Because see here with the AMT kit, the interior is a lot more basic. Where it looks like the console would just slip right in. And possibly some other stuff. Then we have door panel. Then we have the door panels themselves. In nice black. Faded black. And then we got... What I do like is having a separate piece for the headliner, which is good if you want to paint the, the interior, but don't want to go go inside and spray the interior down, and you don't want to get some overspray. So that's nice to get. Then here, and here what else? We got the body parts. So. We got the basic, we got pretty much the basics, like we got, got exhaust tips, but of course in this one they're plastic instead of the metal ones. And then we got a hood, which will just end up pressing into the body, and it won't be able to be opened. And then we have some more of the exhaust parts. Plastic here is a little warped, but... I don't think that will, that has affected the parts. Got got a ring spoiler that will go on the back. So so far, there's a pretty good, decent amount of parts in here, which is quite quite a surprise. Instead of having your basic snap tight kit only consist of twenty or so parts, let me just get the let me just get my plastic plastic out of here. Then, you know, like here we have the dash pad or the dashboard itself in silver. Got some brakes. And then we got the mirrors themselves, which surprisingly are molded in gray instead of being molded blue with the rest of the body. And, yeah, here we got the console, which will just go in like, which will probably just go in. Then we got steering wheel with a little bit of some flash on it but probably just get the knife in there just trim that off nothing too major and then we got here interesting bag full of seats and tires which this is the first time seeing seats being thrown in with the tires so that's different definitely unique so we'll just get this bag open So we got, again, we have no-name tires, but a pretty nice tread pattern, and by the looks of it, they'd be directional. They're some a type of directional tires. So, so these will look pretty nicely on the gold rims. Then along with it, we got the decal sheet, which I'll get this opened up.
not a whole lot to this decal sheet, but you get you got the orange and black stripes with the Hot Wheels logo across. And then what looks like the hood stripes along with the roof and side skirts. Then if you want to do this as just a basic Camaro, you can just use the basic basic gauges and stuff. Save the Hot Wheels stuff for others for something else. So it's pretty much that. Then we got the instructions, which are nicely cut, which is detailed similar, just detailed exactly like the box, which is a nice touch. And then you probably only get about a couple pages on here. By the feel of it, it's only a single sheet, and here it is fully open. Does get, yeah. So I was, so I was right. They are directional tires. So they'll go on a certain way. So just be, just be aware of that. And then, pretty much a case of everything just goes simply together. Definitely, this is probably gonna be more painting stuff up more than an actual quick build, where you put everything together within 20 minutes. So, that's pretty much that. Then we'll clean this stuff. Then we'll clean this stuff up again, and compare compare all this stuff to what you get in the Rebel kit, and see what it's like. So now I have both kits here open and set out. So first thing we'll look at is the body. So. As I did say, it has separate mirrors. It's all molded, has the entire siding open. Whereas on the AMT version, it's all, it has, it has a win, the molding for the back window installed, which, which the AM, which the Revell kit does not have. Then looking at it, the Revell kit doesn't have an opening for what, where it would be a radio antenna, or the satellite antenna, where this car would have. The noticing as well is that on the AMT version, is that it's got an extra lip here, which is where the back window would install, as well as it got, got it as well as on the front. Whereas on here, it's all smooth. Now, main thing is that because when we look at the glass on the Revell kit, it's all one piece. So that means the headliner is also part of it. Whereas on the AMT version, it's a separate piece. So you're probably going to have to mask everything off to paint this, your interior color. But the thing I like about on the AMT kit is that it's got the indent for where a sunroof would have gone if this was a sunroof car, whereas the Revell kit does not have that feature. So, then we also notice how on the Revell version is the the roof lights and console is a lot bigger than the AMT version. As you can see here. And then for the sun visors, the AMT one does have the hinges where the sunroof or the sun or the sun visor would go so those have a bit more detail whereas this is just looks like it's just a indented indented flap that doesn't do much so then continuing on with that we got the window pieces so we have the glass from the AMT kit which when you compare it the AMT AMT glass is a little bit more clear, but the Revell has the frosting, so you can have the gasket trim. Then you do ha you do get the little bit of the bonus of having molded in windshield wipers, which is a nice touch, but will probably be a pain to do. Then we got the back window, whereas the one on here, as you can where yeah. It's actually fairly close in size, surprisingly enough. If anything, they're exact same dimensions. 
So if I really wanted to, I could put tinted windows on the Ravel Camaro. So, so there's that. Then going on, then a little bit going back to the to the body. The big difference is that you ha the body you have to put the front clip on. You have to put the front clip on in order to put the car together, as well as the back bumper. Just have those temporary in place so I can take those off later. Whereas on the Ravel kit, those are already pre pre molded in. So I guess in order to use the proper body kits, like the rear diffuser here, those will probably those will most likely have to be installed separately instead of being part of the bumper itself. So with that, I'm not going to be able to take the the other diffuser, mold that on, unless I decide to go crazy and chop off the bumper. Chop, chop off part of the bumper to get it to work, but I'm not going to be worried about that all that much. Then along with the rear, got de got similar amount of detail, but whereas with the Ravel kit here, we got we have the openings for where the chrome for the head for the tail lights would go into. It's just all solid, and the lights will just press in on the back. But we do get the nice details of of the bow tie and marker lights on the bottom. But what you don't get on the AMT bumper is that you don't get a license plate bracket. Whereas it might be a little bit hard to tell, but there's a little bracket on top to put the license plate on. So, it's pretty much that. And then the bodies themselves feel like they're exact. They feel like they're just about exactly the same. And then you can see here, got the molded in door handles. And what looks like too is that there's going to be another piece of trim that's going to go over top. So there's pretty much that on the body. Then moving on to some other sex accessories like the hood. How the hood here is supposed to open up, whereas this one's just going to be solid. It might, if you, I don't know why you would, but it looks like that the hood might ever so slightly be able to fit if you just trim it on and you got like this one you know what because you know what because this is going to be painted with the car because there's no underbody details you might as well put take this off and then show so it would sit on the car like so then of course switching it over to the Ravel kit, it feels like that it would fit ex almost perfectly, but only exceptions is that it's got the locating, this here's got the locating tabs for when the body, when the car will get pushed together. So there's pretty much, so that's pretty much, so the hoods feel exact, just about exactly the same. Kind of wish that the AMT was a full kit, but being a curbside, I'm not too concerned about that. Then we have the interior gauge, the interior panels. How uh, we have here, where we got the air vents, the radio, and the gauges. That will have a piece that will insert through the back. So on the AMT kit, you get get very lackluster details for the dash or specifically for the radio looks like it was just covered over looking like it was optional and then the air vent the air vents on this one are actually closed instead of on here where they're open that doesn't really make a difference all to me that much but we do have we do have the steering column is it already pre-attached to the dashboard itself and some 
the controls and then the pedals on here are molded with the dash whereas on the car they're part of the interior so you have you have the gas brake and clutch pedal so this will just pretty much go on top of everything so it's pretty much that and then we got while well, we're at the chassis, have here the chassis itself. As you can see, as you can imagine, not a lot of detail going on underneath compared to the Ravel kit. Because you have like extra rib textures, straps, locating marks. Whereas on here you don't have much. And then when you go towards the interior, the interior tub has the inner fenders molded in with it since this one here does get you an engine whereas the AMT kit just gives you the basics very basic interior since everything else will be covering it up and you got so then then you also have the interior panels which I did trim off on both kits how you do get it, the pieces themselves are a lot smaller, but line up fairly similar to each other. They both have locating marks on the bottom to, to make it easier to line stuff up. And from what I can tell, they feel... They, they seem like they're very similar. Whereas, and then here you have a, a deeper depth for the interior tub. Whereas on here it's very gradual. Then you do get the window frame for the back, whereas you don't for this. Then the fill, then of course this one here's a little has a little bit more of a greater thickness. So there's then there's I can imagine there be stickers for to put on top of the speaker and possibly interior lights on the door. And then, go, then continue on, on with some of the interior stuff. We have, already did cover the dash pad. Then we have the console, which surprisingly enough, the Revel, no, the AMT kit does have a bit different version. How the AMT, no, the Revel version looks like it's actually an automatic instead of a manual. Whereas on here, you get... You get a shift boot, then cup holders and dials and buttons for underneath. Whereas you get your dials here, but what looks like would be an empty console. You do get your cup holders, which do do appear to be much smaller and probably more closer to scale than on the AMT version. But with the so yeah, looking at this, it does seem like that you get, you do have a few different things. Here you have a, like, you have a proper, more realistic looking parking brake lever and the console shifter. Then here you have the steering column along with the steering wheel. This has got some decent texture to it, but... Nothing over extravagant. Okay, so looking here, yeah, the apparently, yeah, so on the dash, you do have, with the emptiness, you do get the console vents as a separate piece, which is nice to have if you want to do extra detailing. Then on the AMT kit, you got a steering wheel with slightly less detail, but still presentable. Thing you do have is that at, at first, you look at the parking brake, you think oh, the nub here looks disproportionate. But I was looking, apparently, apparently with the nub, with the nub, if that's actually just some piece of flash, so that'll just poke off. So that'll come off, and then just have a normal parking lever, and then you got your shift knob right here. 
So if anything, they're fairly close and similar to design with some slight differences. And then I think finish off, I'll cover off the seats where the seats do have quite a bit of weight to them, surprisingly enough. But they are one-piece seats, which is to be expected. Whereas with the Revell kits, the Revell kits, you do end up having it where the seats do have to, do require a seat backing. Do require a seat backing to bring out more detail with it. So then.